Und das ZDF der ist schon mit Aussehen auf den Freunden. Wir freuen uns, dass wir von der Kultur Also wir machen hier alles, wir sind im letzten Jahr der Vaterparlamentmeisterschaft. Wir machen den Einmarsch der Kampflichter am Skistand vorne, Thomas Christofoli. Leider, leider nicht dabei, müssen wir sagen, unsere Beppos ja, sind nicht durchgegangen. Leider, die sind alle super drauf, die Beppos, das sind ja die Mädels von äh, der Turnabteilung des SV Rupolding. Und sie wissen, es ist ganz traurig, auch am Mädels haben geweint, weil sie leider nicht auftreten dürfen. Aber sie geht das Konzept geht vor und da sind die Beppos leider durchgelaufen. Thomas Christofoli, das ist der mit der roten Zipfelhaube, der, der steht bereit. Er schaut, ob seine Konflikte da sind. Ja, ganz klar, die sind bereit. Und dann würde ich sagen, Lupi. Jetzt wieder gut. 2, 6, 0. 3, 0. 3, 8, 5, 7. Neun, vier, drei. Eins, zwei, sieben. Und es hat Tradition in Rumpolding. Und wir wollen sie auch heute alle sehen. Ohne euch geht gar nichts. Danke, dass ihr alle da seid. Und schaut sie mal, diese Bilder gehen raus in alle Welt. Das sind die Fans auf der Tribüne. Jawohl. Nachher beim Fahren in die Lied, der Vogel zwitschert mit alle Machen hier mitten in Rumpolding. Auch wenn keine Zuschauer da sind. Schneetemperaturen gemessen, schauen Sie auf die Videowall. Wir sind die Wachster. Wir brauchen schnelle Bretter, das ist ganz, ganz wichtig beim Biathlon. Und unsere Kampfrichter sind super drauf. Dankeschön für den schönen Herrn. Und Gruß an die Kiepgauer Alten, an diese wunderschönen Bilder, die hier raus in alle Welt gehen. Und wir haben noch Harald. Fünf Minuten bis zum Start. 14, 30, 30. Also nicht um 14, 30. Wir warten noch 30 Sekunden und dann geht's los. Ja, da sind wir jetzt auf der Wand schon die Strecke. 3 mal 2,5 Kilometer im Grün. Gilt es abzulaufen, wie gut ist sie da? Jetzt sind wir wieder da und wir lauschen und hören der Musik im Hintergrund und wir sehen, wie sich äh, üblicherweise unsere Kampfrichter vom Skistand vor, ja, nichts, vor nichts eigentlich, vor ein paar, vor ein paar Fahne, die bleiben bitte oben, weil wir bleiben auch hier traditionell eins der bekanntesten Lieder aus Rupolin, unser Fahnenlied. Thank you. 
Toll, dass das ZDF heute übertragt. Unser Rufvoldinger Herbert Fritzlinger ist ja Co-Kommentator, Experte. Ich höre ihn immer so gerne, weil er gibt hier wirklich super Informationen. Der Herbert macht das so super und war hier auf meinem Platz gesessen bei der World Team Challenge, die er ja veranstaltet. Wir schauen in die Augen von Ekaterina Arakumova. Ja, so eine Präsenz, da sind jetzt mindestens 20 Länder drauf. Ist gut drauf, die 31-jährige Elf Stadt hatte sie in dieser Saison. Und jetzt geht's gleich los. Ich 
Zunächst aber mal Galina Wischnewskaya, Jeporenko, Kasachstan. Aber da kommt Hanna Sola mit der 3. Was machen die Fähnchen? Und die sind lasch, die hängen runter. Haha, das ist sehr, sehr gut. Weil da haben wir wenig Wind, das heißt gar kein Wind. Und das ist gut für die Athleten, in denen wünschen wir jetzt alles Gute. Hanna Sola, bin ich sicher, ja, wird eine erste Marke setzen. Boucher. This is really her event, the sprint. Silver medal from the World Championships behind Tyrell Ekhoff and ahead of Hannah Solo, who's uh, going so well at the moment, uh, despite that one miss on the first shoot. Julie Simon, her teammate, leading the way after that first shoot to a time of 6.55, which would suggest we're looking at around 19 and a half, 20 minutes for the win here. Well, that's a good start for Innerhofer. One win to a name. Uh, it's uh, out of my memory. It's so long ago, Mike. But uh, I wonder whether that was the catalyst that actually set the Austrian women on the track they're now on. Quite, quite possibly. It was a long time ago. It was, it was actually the week after the Olympics in 2014 uh, to Makita. And then she did nothing for five years after that. Nothing to speak of. Since then she has a four other 
springt ja ganz, ganz wichtig. Dann hängt ja am Sonntag der Verfolger dran. Ada there, it was an aggressive ski time, but this is her weakness, sadly, on the range. Oh, no wind influence, uh, that's a real... Oh, that's not going to make the rest of the, the, the day much fun for Marietta. 67% in the prone up to today. That's dropped to uh, 75 now. Right, this should be interesting. Tirolekov, she's coming up the near end. The Norwegians trading in lane number one. And that is exactly where Tirolekov wants to go. Her return to the World Cup. The overall World Cup, as Mike said earlier, is gone. She's 398 points behind her teammate, Roisland, with only 11 events to go. Oh. A ski speed patch again looks a lot better. She was only 4.8 seconds, well, 3.3 seconds uh, behind coming into the range. Yeah, she's won plenty of sprints, missing one. But that was when she was uh, a good, what, 1.5% quicker than she is at the moment. Hauser, uh, compared to Ekhoff, is just three seconds slower than the Norwegian. So that's looking good for Hauser. Now you'd expect her to get five. Yeah, more dynamic on the track. Just under 13 seconds to the cross shot. Rapid fire. That's nice. That is nice. Now, is that going to take the lead? Julie Simon still uh, the quickest on 6.55. But she's not quite going to match that as uh, Roisland pre prepares herself, fires herself up for her 7.500 metre effort. And as always, gives everything from the second she starts. So Ekhoff started ahead of Hauser and now finds herself tucked in behind the tall Austrian. I don't think she'll rest there too long. In fact, that's Roisland, my mistake. Uh, it's not Ekhoff. Ekhoff uh, just completing her penalty loop as we go to Denise Herman, who, well, when she's on form, she's a threat. She, what, what was she, fourth in the World Championships, Mike? That was a good race. Missed one. I think it was the very last shot in the world that went wide, kept her off the podium. Yes, um, she, uh, her, her difficulty or, her, or the aspect of her biathlon that's letting her down right now is her shooting. And looking back at the records, it's seven years since a German female biathlete won here in Rupolding. And I would imagine the favourite is Herman for the German team, but she needs to hit all ten targets. Uh, Lisa Theresa Hauser might manage to live with the pace of the fresh leg uh, Roisland, but uh, it wasn't for long. Heike uh, just in the sights there, bringing the fall of the shot about six millimeters to the right of where it was when she zeroed. Well, that's one of the best shoots we've seen so far from Heike. Uh, not the quickest on the tracks by any means. Hannah Sola, who missed one in the pro. No, she needs five. She's missed one, so that's a maximum of eight today for Sola. No, oh, another one missed, so another 300 metres of penalty. It will not be her day, and that's a little bit surprising. She's going to lose uh, big points there, I think. Now she'll have to really ski hard to make a top ten, I would imagine. Julia Simon. Well, she left the start gate on a mission. 
and uh, the green light tells you that she's kept that going pretty much for the first two and a half kilometers and the middle two and a half 56 inside oh it's all falling apart for Simon. needs this to have any chance of a top five three gone wide Hannah Erberg has missed again and Mike the first thing you said the shooting conditions are perfect no win long downhill run but even without the fans here there's something about this range that just produces more mistakes than you expect well, it is the perfect day, the light is good, uh, there's no pressure from 20,000 spectators uh, cheering each shot or, uh, yes, uh, not booing, but uh, grunting for the missed shots. I don't know why Hannah missed that one. She looked uh, as if the position was perfect, maybe rushing it. So, Erberg is out after the first shoot, fastest in. That's uh, a little bit of good news for the Swedes. Uh, she's only 13 seconds off the lead. Innerhofer going into third place. This is after the first shoot, remember, but uh, Julie Simon is pretty much out of the equation, having missed three. Innerhofer looking pretty cheerful. She is, and very sparky, very, uh, very much on form today. Elvira Erberg, extraordinary athlete, tall and strong. She's a uh, bigger build than her sister, more powerful, certainly. Suited to this sort of course, Mike? I think so. Uh, as you mentioned, those long levers, arms and legs to cover the flat sections, very, very strong. Oh. In a Hoffer having an even worse day than we saw from Julie Simon. Four misses. What is that about? That's uh, extraordinary. Maybe we have discussed this in the past, Mike, actually, that all your training for race situations is done with a high pulse. Maybe the pulse here is just a little bit lower than normal. And a, and a slow pulse is a strong pulse. You know, uh, you're, uh, you're so right. When you come to this range, having been to, to uh, Oberhof and then prior to that, normally it's Hoff Wilson prior to Christmas. It, it is, you have to you have to maintain a, a good pace in to keep the, the three beats per second in terms of your heartbeat. And maybe that little rhythm is certainly changing for Innerhofer. Four penalties, you wouldn't expect that at this level. On the track, uh, Reuschland at 1.7 kilometers, uh, three seconds behind Hannah Erberg, second fastest. Twenty-six is Amy Berserger of Switzerland. The top 40 would be a good result for her, but as we've seen. So the big names have made bad mistakes in the standing shoot particularly and that does open it up for others to get World Cup points where they otherwise might not. Roisland, uh, 4.8 inside, the quickest time coming in. Just looking at her splits, uh, she's four seconds slower than Hannah Erberg over the first kilometre, uh, moved up to within three. So a steady start from Roisland and then picking up the pace as that first lap went on. Tyrell Eckhoff. Four out of five in the prone, four out of five in the stand. Not bad for her return. I don't think it's going to be a glorious one. Roisland, on the other hand, is still on the course for yet another win in the World Cup. Five so far this season. Hence, she has uh, a decent lead in the World Cup standings. Not quite 100 points clear. What is it? 88, the margin between herself and... Elvira Erberg. Denise Herman, she's not risking a fast, a daring shooting, and I think that's a good place to be. Well, is that a virtual crowd they've got cheering for a mic? <laughs> I'm not sure what they've done. Uh, normally, if there were a roof, it would have been lifted off the stadium with that performance. But that's exciting for Germany. Hermann is out into fourth place. 
Uh, and if she can uh, nail five standing targets, then she is going to be uh, right up in the top positions. Hauser leading at the moment after the second shoot, ahead of Yislava of the Czech Republic. Tyrolekov into third place, 38 seconds down. And uh, we've got Davidova, uh, who is for Ak Avakamova, who started number one in fifth position, but only 13 athletes through that stage so far. And he's Bescon. Roughly 100 metres off the pace set by Roisland. And Ace is another one of those careful biathletes. They don't want to risk too much on the range. 2.8 to 4 seconds in between each shot. Yeah, 28's respectable though, Mike. Um, we will get a couple of 22s, 23s. Vetsova with... Roughly 2.4 in between each shot. Nice rhythm from her so far. A little bit slower on the last one. And that one goes wide. I think after the Christmas break, uh, what we witnessed in Oberhof, the, the rise of the Russian team, the form uh, for three of the women athletes, four of the men had really improved over that uh, couple of weeks break at Christmas. Dorothy Vera, nice cornering from her. Lena Heike, five in the pro. How many have we got clear after the second shoot? Well, uh, Hauser and Yislava, Avakamova and Tomingas. So we got five out of 15 with the perfect score. So it looks as though your prediction of 20 clear shoots is uh, on course at the moment. Hannah Sola goes into second. Uh, the shooting was not so good from Hannah Sola today. Three misses in all. She's dug deep to try and claw the time back, but 22 seconds off Yislava's lead. So roughly gaining back uh, 310, 320 metres. Yeah, she's given everything on this occasion. Claire Egan of USA. Haven't seen much of Claire Egan so far this season, Mike. No, she hasn't hit that uh, the form spot in terms of shooting at the end, but uh, I would expect Dora to be at her best for the Olympics. Yeah, she didn't race in Oberhof, which is why we didn't see her there. But uh, 44th in the World Cup standings, as we see Lynn Persson of Sweden, Hannah Erberg, her teammate. Again, a miss in each, so the same shooting score as Tyrell Ekhoff. So that'll be interesting to see which one of those two finishes higher up the order. Julia Simon looking so good, Mike, at five kilometres. Absolutely furious with herself for missing three. Incredible ski speed. She, for me, uh, Simon had all the mindset to, to have a good race today, but I think panicked, uh, was too tense, was trying to keep the race going when she was shooting instead of calming down and slower attitude on the range. Yeah, she knows she's in good form. She has um, taken 20 seconds out of Hannah Sola, who uh, prior to today has been the quickest on the tour. So uh, Simon is uh, on the rise just needs to get some good shooting in. I think uh, Sunday could be her day. Voigt for Germany, as I mentioned. Preutz, who's pretty much been their number one so far this year, still out of action. From the same village as uh, the great Sven Fischer. Not far from Oberhof. This is uh, good from Tom and Gas. Uh, Zachna in the men's field last week uh, with a 17th position shooting 0 0 has lifted the spirits of the Estonian team. Zero, zero, got to be happy with that, but 
what it does is tell you how much of an improvement you've got to make out on the snow. 40 looking a little bit but like uh, Hannah Solo in terms of technique. It is, of course, uh, Zinara Alimbakava. Seven point seven seconds behind. Yeah, if you were asked to name the top three in the World Cup standings, I'm not sure her name would spring to mind. But that is where she sits, number three. 418 points accrued, and with five out of five, uh, it's looking good. Only seven seconds off the pace coming in, and so uh, if she can go clear, then. Uh, she certainly could be the one putting pressure on Roisland. Roisland, yes, five out of five in the prone. Alin Bikava, she seems to be stuck so often in, in their fourth place. She's been fourth place five races, five World Cup races this season, and just one podium. Well, Roisland, on the other hand, five <laughs> times on the top of the podium. Look at that. 12 seconds quicker than anyone coming in, and she's got to hit 10 again. So it looks uh, already as if she can make it three victories in succession. She's just pulling further and further ahead of the Erbergs in Olympa Carver and uh, Lisa Teresa Hauser. Another fantastic performance. Hauser gets 10 out of 10, goes into the lead with a 38.8. But I'll get you the difference between Hauser and Roisland. It's 14 seconds after that second shoot. Ekhoff, second place for now. 38.8. Take away the two misses, and she's a good margin ahead of Hauser. So that goes down as a good comeback. Not spectacular, but good. I think so, and I think Ekhoff, yes, missing two. The, all the top biathletes know they can't win uh, by missing two. Uh, missing one, she would have had a chance, I think, for a top five at the end of the day, but, but certainly looking better. Bescon for France. Now, the time at the moment is pretty healthy as she comes in. Down in sixth just coming into the range 22 seconds down on simon and roisland's time uh, julia simon might worth noting she is quicker than uh, roisland but uh, obviously missing targets oh missing very many targets as well uh, incredible race but the ski speed looked uh, very very firm and ace once again will take her time that wasn't taking her time actually 12.3 But in between, I think that's the more important aspect, so that you're settled as you squeeze the final part of the trigger. Well, that's a very good shoot indeed for Bescon. And should be going into... Is she going to get into the top three? I think Lynn Person may be pushed down one slot. She is. So as things stand, it's Roisland ahead of Hauser. Best caught in three after two shoots. Retzevo with a miss in the prone. She's 25. The penalty loop taking about 26.5. So the skiing is good. The shooting, oh, until that last one, letting that go is going to prove very costly indeed. And uh, that will put a, another 26 seconds behind today's winner when it comes to the pursuit on Sunday. Well, Persian has held this, uh, the pace well on the last lap, running almost level with uh, Lisa Teresa Hauser in terms of ski speed. Well, look at that. She's going into second. And the Swedes, uh, it's not just about the Erberg sister, Lynn Persian, certainly a big improvement since Christmas. Yeah, she'll be happy with that. And here comes Hannah Erberg. Good starting position for Erberg today, number 20. Won the very first sprint of the season. Not today, but uh, she pushes Ekhoff yet another place further down with two misses. So out skis Ekhoff by some margin, actually, Mike, when you consider they both shot the same. But uh, Ekhoff, of course, a little bit race rusty. 
I this think so. Uh, that will come back, and uh, I'm sure we can expect more from Ekhoff and Antholt. Paulina Fialkova skiing much better. She hit five out of five prone. She went and missed four targets standing. Elvira Erberg, top right-hand corner of your screen for Sweden as we see Chevalier Boucher across the line into four. Margin's still quite good. Elvira Erberg, can she make it five? She does. Good shooting from her. And uh, which of the sisters is coming out on top today? I think it's going to be the younger one. Uh, quite a lot of interesting interviews with uh, Simon Forcard, Mike, about the battles and the troubles he had having to accept that his younger brother was faster, more talented, more successful than he was. And, and um, you know, asked about the Erbergs, I still think the key factor is that at the moment, uh, Hannah wins one, then Elvira wins one. So they're both sharing the spoils. Yes, they are. And that's, that was amazing. Elvira now just uh, 8.4 ahead of Reuschland as she left the range. I think uh, Elvira will extend that to 12, 13 seconds. Yeah, there's a, a little bit more urgency in the Norwegian uh, team because they know that if Roisland is going to win this one, she has got to push very, very hard over the last kilometre. Um, Elvira, as Mike says, with a lead, 8.4 seconds with 2.5k to go. Um, she's a fighter, Elvira, isn't she? she? She's not the sort that tends to lose time on that last lap. No, uh, her form did, her ski form did take a little drop off after the Christmas period, I think, comparing it to Annecy, or oh, nearly fall there from Hoynish. Eleventh place for Hoynish leaves. Uh, Hauser still number one. 2027 is the leading time at the moment. A little jink to the right and a step to the left for Roisland as she comes into the stadium now. She can see the finish line and uh, what is it? Another 20 or so glides from here. Still looking well balanced on the ski. Not not so symmetrical, looks slightly stronger on that left-hand side as Roisland comes in. It's going to be a, a green light for her, a new leader. Hauser pushed down a two. Roisland uh, into top spot, 20.06. And uh, Elvira Erberg, as far as I can see, is, is she the only athlete? Well, Dorothy Elvira's gone uh, reasonably well. Olimba Carver started number 40. Uh, I'm not sure what Olympic cover. Well, here she comes. She's, yes, she's got shot a shot clear. Clear. That's third. Yeah, into third. Well, Lynn Pershing uh, was thinking she may have a chance of a podium, and then all of a sudden, three athletes uh, exit the range ahead of her time. Yeah, and Mona Brawson might do the same as well. Mona Brawson, a brilliant first lap from her, only 11 seconds down, and Brawson. Uh, I'll get some splits on her second lap uh, fairly shortly. Justine Brazard Boucher, just ahead of uh, Anais Bescourt. Denise Herman, she didn't manage to cope with the pressure, the self-pressure in terms of her stand shooting, missing two. Two misses on the stand. Uh, we've seen so many of the big names doing that today. It's uh, disappointing. And uh, pushes a 105. That's uh, even with two misses, Mike, you'd expect to see her within 35, 40 seconds of the, of the leading time. Yes, she would. I think she's tired. Her pace really dropped off on uh, the middle lap, and then the last lap she dropped off even more. Bescon, Judas Simon on uh, ninth place at the moment. Bescon becomes the best of the French so far, courtesy of some perfect shooting. Now, Vera. Oh, that's more like it. I thought she rushed that last one, but 10 go down, and Dorothy and Vera not quick enough to win, but... 
Uh, if she gets a good start in the pursuit, she's always dangerous. So nice, Mike, to see her shooting without a care in the world. Do you know what? You could feel the, that free thinking, that ease that uh, she used to show us every day through the rifle. And that's really good news for Dorothea Vera. Fourth place exiting. She's got two seconds to move up into third place. Yeah, I sort of feel that the psychologist is the most important person in the Italian team. It's, it's such an important part to, to straighten your mind, to take the pressure away, to just just feel the rifle rather than forcing the rifle. It's, it's hard, easy to talk about, very difficult to do. Retsova nearly a minute off, still goes into the top ten. Margin between first and last at the moment is 2.41. Takizaki of Japan. Um, seems to have lost some of the ski speed that we saw early season she was doing so well shooting brilliantly and actually her shooting record is good the Japanese athlete but uh, the ski speed has gone since Christmas and hopefully uh, she'll be able to pick it up over the next couple of weeks Elvira Erberg leading after the second shoot it looks good at the moment 59 her split uh, from a 14 second lead pushed it up to 16 going through 6.7 the lead is 21.8 Elvira Erberg does not throw away a lead like that and it looks as though the younger Erberg sister is about to claim her third win of the season and uh, go a little way a little way to closing the gap on the uh, World Cup leader. Well, Elvira, she departed the range 8.4 seconds down. I thought she could double that, but she's even picked the pace up more and more along the journey. Yeah, she did the double in Annecy, winning two events there, getting her first and second World Cup win in successive days. And here in Rupolding, she has built herself a very, very healthy lead. 21 seconds over Roysland. She's a penalty loop, almost a penalty loop clear at the start of the pursuit. Hildebrand with uh, 9 out of 10 into 8th position. She is the best of the Germans. And uh, Hermann and Voigt will have to think again. I think Hildebrand is getting closer and closer to uh, playing a major part when it comes to the Olympic Games. Notten with 10 out of 10, 105 down. Uh, that makes it two Norwegians, three Norwegians in the top five, in the top 10, because Ekhoff hanging on to 10th place at the moment. Well, yes, who would have expected again uh, Hildebrand to be the best German? Well, the race isn't finished yet, but that's another comfortable slot, uh, eighth position. Drop down to ninth now, Hildebrand. Going back to the first shoot, uh, Mona Bruce and Mike. Um, haven't seen her through the second shoot. She can't be far away. Rawson is going exceptionally well. Fourth place going uh, through 4.2 kilometers. Sharvatova of the Czech Republic, another individual who's gone well uh, on the first shoot. She started number 64, just gone through the shoot. And uh, Chloe Chevalier has uh, gone through that first shoot and put herself into uh, the top 11, 17 seconds off the lead. So some of the later starters are certainly putting pressure on the big names. We've got Lisa Vistotti, who started 57. Aline Bekova looking, for me, very tired this week around, Patrick. That's perfect shooting. Uh, certainly in Hockvilsen, the second, the third World Cup weekend of racing, she was faster than this, but it's still a very good performance. I'm afraid, Mike, uh, we missed Vitozzi. She has gone and missed for, I think, the sixth time this year. She's missed more than three on her first shoot. Four have gone wide on the prone. That is so painful, and I'm, I am surprised uh, that that hasn't been able to turn around. Uh, a lot of it's in the mind. The coaches can do so much, but at this level, that isn't... Uh, it's very unusual to continue that uh, poor shooting form. Bizarre Boucher.
Justine has been skiing so well all season, Patrick, and today it's looking much better with five out of five in prone coming up for the stand now. I really hope she can manage to maintain that perfect zero again. Nearly all the athletes opting for this uh, stay in the cut tracks option. Ali Bekova didn't. I think it must be slower. It is slower outside of the cut track. Rawson has gone through her second shoot, just missing one. Uh, so currently she's uh, sitting in eighth position after the second shoot. So Brawson's having a, a much better day. Elvira Erberg is the best of the Swedes, obviously, going through that second shoot in 13.46. 44 on their way into the stadium, Dorothy Elvira. Nice to see her hit 10 out of 10. Yes, first time this season, it's a good performance. Is it going to get third? It is. Just, just into third place. Now, Brazil Boucher, a chance to push yourself into the top three. Only nine seconds off the lead time of Elvira Erberg. She's quicker than Julie Simon at this stage, quicker than Olympa Carver, quicker than Brawson, quicker than Roisland. Mona Brawson, Mike, has absolutely turned up the gas on her skiing. Oh. Good finish, good finish, but that one shot has cost her. If we say 25 seconds plus the eight or so she was trailing, we're looking at around 35 to 40 seconds. So top five still possible despite that miss. I really think Patrick had she skied out now, she'd have been 3.7 behind. I really think she could have challenged Elvira Uber, but you have to hit targets. Stina Nielsen, 12 seconds slower than the best. In terms of ski speed, she is the third fastest Swede into the range first time round. What have we got total? Just around the 30 mark. 37.4, it's still slow, most of the time being lost on the preparation for the first shot well there we see the standings and uh, Elvira Erberg sitting pretty on 1945 uh, I hesitate to say it but I can't see anyone else who's likely to challenge Chloe Chevalier and uh, Lucy Shavatova possibly Look at Julia Simon down in 16th, 0 3. An average shoot from her, and she would have been looking at a podium finish. She is skiing like lightning. This is much better from El Elena Krushenkina. Obviously, in Scandinavia, Mike, there's been much talk about the form of uh, Tidalekov in the early part of the season. Uh, when they've done the stats, they found that actually she's only marginally slower than last year. But uh, there are so many other athletes that have stepped it up a level to, to better her or equal her. Yes, I, I suppose you, at the end of the season, give the athletes some weeks off. You do the analysis. What, where can you work? which aspects of your team's biathlon can be improved. And so many coaches in this build-up to the Olympics have really gone to town to lift the weaknesses of their athletes. And yes, I, I think the ski speed for many has lifted by 2, 2.5%. 2 5 out of 5 for Shavatova. Well, that's gone. 
four out of five, and she's still looking at top 15. Three out of five, she's going to struggle to stay in the top 20. So uh, after a really good start, what about uh, Chloe Chevalier? Competitive uh, pretty much on level terms with Shavatova for the first two loops. Bescon has hit 10. The only French woman, I think, to do so so far. Will Chevalier match her? Oh, you can feel the nerves. Oh, isn't biathlon amazing? Four careful shots, well positioned, stable through the rifle, then panic, a little bit of panic, and taking longer for the last shot, that cost her a miss. Yeah, I'm not sure it was panic, Mike. I think she was just thinking. <laughs> Just she was just up. starting to think, wow, I'm going to hit 10. Moronova shows her how to do it. That was a good quick shoot from uh, Moronova for her second time into the range. And we'll uh, try and pick her up. She was down in 11th coming in. So I think Moronova is going to push herself up into the uh, top seven or eight. In fact, she goes even better than that. Sixth position for her. Mona Bruce with a brilliant race. Uh, only one miss. 55.9 behind. Let's take take that margin down to 30, uh, and she would have been knocking on the door of the podium. So uh, Brosson, I think that's that's the most encouraging result we've seen from her this year. It certainly is, and, and sharing seventh place at the moment uh, with her teammate uh, Persian. This is uh, much improved from Russian athlete uh, Moronova. I must say, Mike, these are some of the best conditions we've had here for a long time. Uh, and such a shame that the spectators aren't able to enjoy it. Uh, it's it's a, a long program, Wednesday through to the Sunday racing. Uh, and the whole idea is to flood the town with uh, biathlon enthusiasts for the week. Uh, and it's generally a very good party. But uh, didn't happen last year, won't happen this year. It's a real shame. They were expecting over 240,000 spectators for the, yes, the five days of racing. Justine, Brisa Boucher last. Uh, few meters for her just an opportunity to fill the lungs big uh, field 112 starters in all Hannah Kebinger of uh, Germany the last to start I think a uh, second last to start uh, the 22 year old Norwegian of course most of the Norwegian team has changed today the rest uh, the main World Cup players are having a break but uh, Arnekliev, uh, she came third last week at the IBU Cup, so she is in good form. Well, the coach is really... Uh, told Justine uh, exactly what she needs to do to move up one place then two places she's desperately trying to achieve just that uh, but running out of distance certainly not a podium certainly worth the push uh, she has moved ahead of uh, Lisa Teresa not by much Fifth place. Another uh, perfect shooting score there from Erdal. So Natalia Bushkina. It's a very good time. If with the perfect shoot and prone shooting. 16 clear shoots in the finish area already. Shkina is going to add to that. So uh, I think we're going to go uh, over the 20 for the day, as we should do in these conditions, to be honest.
Mike, we often talk about how many how many bad shoots you have to have before your confidence is gone. Uh, <laughs> you say it can take only one. Just wondering whether Julie Simon is going to have a meltdown on the next standing shoot. It, it could really affect you, especially her race was so perfect today, I felt it, until the tightness, the tension of her stand shoot. I think she'll learn from that, to be honest, and, and just calm down a little the next race. I like the way Stina Nielsen, she looks over towards the camera, just taking the eyeball away from the, the sighting, then get it fresh back on target. It's not working though. Jean, Jean, Jean Paul just, uh, sorry, Jean Marc there on the right just uh, exhaling the tension from the coaches. Uh, it's painful when you watch your athletes and you know they can do better than three missed targets standing. Crunch Steinovic with five on the first shoot. Haven't seen too much of the Americans so far. Try to find out uh, how Claire Egan gone on. It's been a disappointing season for the Americans so far. Uh, Susan Dunkley definitely seems to be coming into some sort of form, Mike. She's hit nine today, up in 42nd position. So again, out of the World Cup points. Yes, I like Sven Steinbeck's uh, position, solid looking, relaxed, oh! That time was excellent, she is off uh, some good form, a first place and a second place in the sprints at the IBU Cup. If she'd hit that last target, she's on a potential top 15. Yeah, that's encouraging. Chloe Chevalier with uh, her last drive. She's gone past Mironova. Well, Mironova actually catching her at one stage. So uh, Mironova's time is the one we will focus on with that perfect shoot and a top 10 finish. That's very healthy indeed. Best of the Russians uh, today, Mironova. We've got, I uh, have to go all the way down to Vasneskova, who's down in 18. Chevalier down in 16th position, 117 off. Well, this is a little replay of Elvira Erberg. Good, good start position for Erberg, Mike, group two, and um, just got the perfect start. Yes, and a lot of the big names ahead of her, especially uh, Reuschland, she, she was getting split times off Reuschland. She absolutely knew she was on a, on a perfect day. Two Erberg sisters uh, pretty much producing identical times for the first lap. But 10 out of 10 versus Hannah's 8 out of 10 makes all the difference. Ekhoff now down in 19th, so uh, more ground lost in the overall World Cup, but it's no longer about the World Cup for her. It will be about victories. It will be about finding some sort of form before the uh, Olympic Games. First game on the fifth, first race on the 5th of Feb. So uh, they're running out of time to find that magic form. And if Antoltz goes ahead as scheduled next week, that might be the best indication of where you should put your money for the uh, Olympic races. Anastasia Keenanen uh, used to well, formerly race for Belarus for many, many years. Uh, married with a child now up in Yuensu. It's her best ever is fifth position. It is. In fact, sixth position in Oberhof, uh, season 11 12. Just 
the Chinese back who made a bit of an impression last week by shooting well. Uh, best relay teams in the mixed relay and the single mixed relay in terms of shooting. Calculated, uh, always taking the middle target out and then working away right. Uh, it didn't work. Thought she would uh, clear all, tar all ten down there. Just Early looking days back, Patrick, in the race for okay. two, 2009, uh, Chun Li Wang from uh, China. She finished fourth here, only 28 seconds behind. So the Chinese athletes have been up at the sharp end of the race previously. Careful and relaxed performance there on the range. No stress, very calm throughout the whole process. Okay. Ushkina racing for Romania. She's Russian. And she is a good biathlete. Well, the ski speed is uh, her weaker aspect, but it's improving. At the finish, the, the best of the German team, it's still uh, Francesca Hildebrand, 17th position. They would have hoped for much better. Fem Steinvik finds the smallest of gaps between the two Swedish athletes. In fact, one Ukrainian, one Swede. But uh, that just shows you how determined she is. And this is a very, very strong finish from Fem Steinvik. Down towards the... Uh, section this is a course where if you work the downhills and the corners that follow the downhills you can make up very very good time and she carries good speed onto the next uphill section excellent skiing great work and with nine out of ten uh, where's she gonna go is she going top 20 certainly I would have thought so Well, still uh, a switch back. Uh, she's not going to be ahead of Ekov. Uh, Ekov missing two targets. Well, she's got a PB of 47th position. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt that she's going to beat that today. We saw a race in Annecy, finished 77th in the sprint there. This is a whole lot better than that. 34th position. Uh, she's got a little bit of a wait to see whether she picks up some World Cup points. Stina Nielsen, a disappointing 72nd. Uh, you don't expect to see her out skied by Fem Steinvik over the last kilometre. I think Stina Nielsen will be very disappointed to find herself so far behind. Three minutes, 19 seconds and uh, no opportunity to start in the pursuit. Always a low position from Merkushna. She raced the first World Cup with a 78th, a 76th position. She was sent back to the IBU Cup. I thought she would come back to World Cup racing strong. That's quite a lot of time given away by Mukashina. 
Just having a look uh, back to the first shoot for any of the really high bib numbers. Uh, no one starting after 68 has got into the top 25. Uh, Kinnanen of Finland started 83, went clear uh, in 26th position. Tang of China shot clear, 28th position. And then uh, Fem Steinvik, we did see, started 77. And she is uh, went through that stage of the race in 30th. On Nick Cleo, 36 seconds to the first shoot. That's that's respectable. Well, 78 athletes uh, already finished, and 19 of them have hit the perfect score. Well, a lot of movement to the barrel in between shots, but a solid position as she put the pressure on the trigger. And that's uh, an excellent start. She's going to miss out, I think, on the top uh, 40. Yes, she does. 55th position, but uh, five out of five in the stand, and she will cut that from 55 to closer to 25. And it can be such a petrifying day, can't it, Patrick? You're wearing a, a World Cup bib for the first time. I, I thought she managed that so well on the range. And at 22-year-old, um, I'm sure she'll wear that bib again, uh, the World Cup bibs, many more times. <laughs> As for the Germans today, uh, looking in the finish, well, we go down the top 10. There aren't any there. Top 15, no, none of the Germans. Franziska Hildebrand is still the best-ranked German down in 17th position. Maybe they're glad that the crowd's on here. I thought the stadium announcer, the one voice, I thought that maybe put uh, Hannah Kebinger off, but she kept her calm, she kept her own routine. That's a, that's a good, uh, very good start from, from her. Another athlete uh, who today it's the first ever World Cup, big experience. What a pity, uh, Patrick, that Preutz, uh, after her ankle injury, uh, falling down some stairs, she then got COVID, so she's hoping to come back for Antholz to get some World Cup experience again prior to the Olympics. Now, Bote of France, uh, it's all about hitting 10. Use the experience. Comes from La Bresse, she's only 21. And we saw her in Oberhof for the first time. Actually had a very good sprint on the first day, finished in 39th position, so picking up her first World Cup points. On that occasion, she hit 9 out of 10. Can she make it 10 out of 10? She can. Excellent shooting from a low start position. And um, Bode, I think, is... Uh, what's she going to manage? She could be back in the World Cup points again. It's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight indeed. 40th position at the moment in the finish is 153 behind. And I think she's likely to lose another 30 seconds. So it's going to be very, very close. better day for Elisa Gasparin unlikely to finish inside the top 40 although it will be close only uh, well, four seconds to pick up from this point to uh, pick up at least one World Cup point
Excellent. Didn't go so well last time at Sprint Race World Cup in Annecy. She uh, missed a total of three, finishing 81st. So a much, much improved day to day. being uh, given the information there she's 61st uh, position he said uh, as she's going over the rise for the second time well that's not bad it's not far off the top half of the field yeah it's a rough rough course this one with uh, very few flat sections this is one of them but all you're doing is preparing for the next uphill By Germans rusty it was 71 he said <laughs> your 71st position <laughs> <laughs> only two Germans in the top 25 Denise Herman sitting down in 24th at the moment um, I don't think any of the Germans have managed to hit 10 out of 10 on a range that they spend more time on than anyone else it's it, it is such an advantage feeling from this point you're exhausted your pulse is uh, or you're working at a rate at about 89 to 91 percent of your absolute maximum you in training you get this feeling so regular You've managed to recover a little here, then the chicanes leading into the range, and uh, it really should be an advantage when you're on your home base, the range which you train on most days throughout the summer. Sheena for Ukraine. Not a uh, brilliant day for the Ukrainians so far. Zima down in 37th, 145 behind, so they really are off the boil at the moment and Mercashino with eight out of ten where's that gonna put her she's not gonna threaten the top 30 either today Petronko at 41 giving her for Germany Arnekiv for Norway. Um, Norwegians using this opportunity to give some youngsters a race. Do you think they choose Rupe holding on purpose? Because, uh, or, or is it just the time of year, the post Christmas uh, trimester, as they call it? Yes, I think, and also, you know, allowing the. The, the, all of the rest of the what was the World Cup team to get this break uh, prior to the Olympics, except for, of course, uh, Reuschland, who uh, is desperate to keep the points coming, and uh, second place today, they are still keeping on coming in. Based on the position, how many are going down? I'll say she'll be with, miss one more. She's going to prove me wrong. Well done. Yeah, very relaxed there, a, a little pressed, I think she wasn't quite ready for the first shot, but very well managed her last four. You can see the dynamic so, or the lack of dynamic movements to get the ski poles on rapidly, uh, just slightly less experience, of course, our first World Cup race today. Yeah, less gas in the tank, I suspect, as we see the last start of today, Hannah Kebinger. Got the dramatic music in the background. Looks solid enough. Can't read the pulse watch from here. I'm sure you've got better eyes than I have. Trying to get it's it. It's looking there. good. Is she going to be the good. only German to hit 10? There's the hesitation, the thinking time. Still looks good. 
He's got it. Very solid. Well, that will guarantee her a start in the pursuit. As uh, the top 60, of course, going through. And uh, the margin, what's uh, she at now? 140. Let's say she slips to around two minutes. Uh, she'll still be comfortably inside the top 60. If she can keep it to 153, then she'll get herself a World Cup point, and that would uh, be a big, big day in her biathlon career. A very lonely race uh, when you're wearing the last bib, as she is uh, bib number 112. At least she gets all the information on exactly where she stands. Elisa Gasparin coming in, her sister Selena down in 45th at the moment. And uh, <laughs> Elisa just pipping her sister by uh, 2.1 seconds on the day. Uh, and uh, Elisa shot 10 out of 10, Selena shot 8 out of 10. So Selena's still the quicker skier amongst the uh, Gasparin sisters. Well, I make it Bote is already finished. 23 athletes, the perfect score. Of course, there's one more to come in, at least with the perfect score. Well, Kebinger, there she is uh, at the back. She knows the importance of keeping the pace on. I'm not sure she, she's going to make the top 60. Uh, she really needs to keep that pace strong. Oh, 57 for Shevchenko, and that pushes uh, start down into 61st position. Kebinger, who we saw finish, is now down to 63, so uh, she won't feature. This is uh, Anneklief for Norway. Look very solid in the shooting. For Bornikova, she just misses out. 62nd position. So uh, it's very, very tight at the back of the field. Uh, the margin once again at 2.21 between 1st and 60th. And that uh, has become pretty standard this season, uh, dropping by about seven or eight seconds on the average last year. The gap between 1st and 60th. So uh, it's Vanessa Hintz who is on the bubble at the moment with uh, a margin of 2.21 behind the leader, but Hintz having missed three in the stand, might be hoping that uh, someone can squeeze in and put her out of her agony. That is so out of character for Vanessa Hintz to, uh, to miss three out of five standing. Normally you'd expect a bad day missing two, but three out of five is, uh, is unusual for her. This descent here, your legs are, are exploding as you come down. 
having climbed the second of the steep climbs. And then uh, you carry this pace into the very final climb before the dropping down towards the stadium. And they clear at 55 after the first shoot. And uh, if she goes clear, there's no doubt she will finish in the top 60. Here we go. 66th position. Coach is definitely was, trying uh, to get her to pick the pace up, Patrick, for that precious top 60 slot. This is the race for the line. Yeah, they'll be enjoying the fact they're all together. Look at the slipstream there. It does make such a difference. And Kevinger taking full advantage of that. Round they come. Well, it'd be nice to see a little sprint into the finish. Short climb still to go. On Ekliev has gone well. Kevinger looking for a top 60. She's going to make it, I think. Uh, she started a full minute behind Arnekliev of Norway. So this is uh, a great effort for someone who started last on the start sheet. And uh, she's taken a few scalps today. Good finish coming in. Uh, Quite sure who that is on the right. Is that? I think it must be Michaela Carrara. It is Michaela Carrara who suddenly found a second win, and uh, Carrara starting 30 seconds ahead of uh, Kevinger of uh, Germany. So uh, a good finish from her, and uh, four of the last athletes all coming across the line together. Kevinger 66. Well, that's surprising. I thought she'd just make it, uh, losing a little bit too much time on that last loop. So she misses out on a top 60, misses out on a Pursuit World Cup. And that means that uh, the top 60, Vanessa Hintz, survives in 60th position, 2.21 behind the leaders. And at the other end of the leaderboard, it's Elvira Erberg, who has taken the win, gets the 60 points. Roisland, the World Cup leader in second place, and Dorothea Vera. There'll be a lot of people happy to see her up in the top three, ahead of Limba Carver, ahead of Brezard Boucher, Lisa Theresa Hauser going well with 10 hits, Anais Bescon of France, uh, a good performance from her. And look at that, eight of the top 10, all hitting the perfect score. Mona Bros would have been up in the top four had she hit one more target. So she'll be encouraged by what she's achieved today. And at the top of the second page of the leaderboard, it's Hannah Erberg, 57.4, the margin between her and her sister. Hannah Sola dropping off the pace, way down in 36th position, 143. The margin, Elisa Gasparin just ahead of Selena Gasparin. Those two will start one behind the other in the pursuit here in Rupolding. Susan Dunkley gets a start, but no World Cup points. Uh, it's been a tough, tough season for Susan Dunkley, but there are signs that the shooting's starting to come back. Uh, if she can just pick up the pace, 2%, that might do it. Get her in the mix for the top 30. Dorothea Vera, third place today. 10 out of 10, first clear shoot of the season, and suddenly she's back on the podium. Roisland, well, what a run of results she has had. First, first, fourth, sixth, first, first, and second today. Uh, since they went to Annecy, she has definitely been the star performer. What's that? 
261 points plus uh, the points picked up today, 54 for finishing in um, second place. So an average of 50 points per race. The maximum is 60. Roisland still comfortably ahead. Erberg closing the gap a little, but only by six points. And Elvira Erberg with her third win on the World Cup. All three of them coming this season. We've got plenty of biathlon coming this weekend. I hope you'll be able to stay with us throughout the men's sprint tomorrow. Um, we go all the way through to uh, Sunday, which should be uh, exciting with the pursuit races. Well, that just about completes our coverage from uh, Rupolding for today. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Elvira, congratulations. Uh, first win in 2022 is a sprint win and absolutely perfect. Can you tell us? Yeah, I mean, for me, this was a perfect race today. Uh, finally, zero shooting in the sprint. I mean, I have been struggling with the shooting in the sprints and having two mistakes in most of them. And uh, for me today, the prone shooting was the key. I've been feeling very confident in the standing, but uh, I, not so much in the prone, so when I managed to hit all targets in prone, I knew that now this can be my day. Now, a lot of time people say that in uh, Rupolding it's tough because you know that you have to shoot zero. Uh, how did you deal with that situation? Uh, of course, I knew that when I was approaching the standing shooting, I knew that I was probably shooting for a really good uh, position. Uh, so, and that is a bit special. I haven't been in that situation that many times, but... Uh, uh, since I've had a very good feeling in the standing, I felt quite calm and confident that I knew that I could do it. And, uh, but of course, it's a special thing to race here in Rupolding. It's usually really tight races, uh, so you never know. Uh, and it was a tough fight on the final lap also. But uh, yeah, it was a perfect race for me today, and I'm super happy. Will we see you on Sunday? Yes. Good. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Well,
Well, nice to hear from Elvira Erberg, and uh, certainly was as about as good as you can get today and closes the gap down just a little in the overall and in the sprint standings, but it's still Roisland who stays top of the pile and is currently favorite to lift the Crystal Globe come the end of the season. Another good day out from Roisland. Second place, that will do nicely. Winning the Crystal Globe is all about consistency and she has been better than anyone else so far this year. Her worst result, uh, she's had two, uh, well, one result outside the top 10. That was 12th in the, the second sprint in uh, Ustersund. Missed too many targets on that occasion. But uh, otherwise, things have been going incredibly well for Roisland. Dorothea Vera. Welcome to the it's been a while since she's been on the podium. Sprint women. Third place, Linda Marx. Dorothea Vera. It's been so long, she forgot her medals. But. Um, yeah, really, really encouraging. And just in time, she usually performs well in Antolts at altitude. So we'll see how she gets on next week, assuming all the races go ahead. I think, I think he's lost the result sheet. Third podium in as many races for Roisland and um, her eighth of the season from just 12 races. How about that? Doesn't quite match Martin Fourcard, who managed to get all the way through to the last race of the season before he failed to get on the podium. Elvira Erberg, 10 places ahead of her sister and keeping the race alive for the overall World Cup come the end of this season. When she shoots clear, she is the one you have to watch out for, especially when Hannah Sola is off the boil as she was today. Another good day out for Lisa Theresa Hauser. Started the day in fifth place in the World Cup standings. What well, she had a couple, three, four, four, four races outside the top 20 so far this year. Got a fabulous win in the second sprint of the season. But she's dangerous, and I think uh, Hauser's best chance probably coming in the individual. And we've got an individual next week in uh, Antolt, so we'll see how she gets on there. But there's your podium and your top six for the day. Elvira Erberg it is who takes the gold medal here in Rupolding. Got two wins in Annecy and a brilliant win here in Rupolding. Well, thanks to your company throughout today. We will be back tomorrow, the men's sprint. And uh, we start at the same time. Half past two local time. So half past one if you're watching in the UK. 
relays and of course the pursuits on Sunday uh, should be fantastic and uh, Elvira Erberg will enjoy a decent lead at the start of that one.